Hi everyone, this is Mr. Herbst here, and our focus today is on the digestion that occurs in our stomach. Um, now here I have a diagram of our esophagus and stomach. You may remember from my last video that uh, the uh, mouth, the purpose of the mouth is to chew the food up into a little ball, and we call that a bolus. This is no longer called food anymore. This, uh, this is scientifically called a bolus. It's like a little ball of food. It would still look like the food that you ate, but... Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's moistened by saliva as, as well as beginning chemical breakdown. Um, so the bolus will enter the esophagus, this organ right here, and it, will, it doesn't just fall down. It has to be pushed down. If you don't believe me, why don't you try uh, drinking water upside down, and you'll see that it, 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 your muscles are so strong that it can actually keep the water moving against the force of gravity. Um, those muscle contractions that it uses are actually called peristalsis. From the throat all the way to the anus, the food moves through a process called peristalsis. It's not just in the esophagus. It's through the, basically the whole digestive system as a whole. Uh, so the bolus will travel down through the esophagus uh, by muscle contractions called peristalsis, and it will enter our stomach right here. Um, there's a sphincter right here that prevents the food from going back up the wrong direction. Um, if you have a chronic heartburn, it may be because this sphincter right here is not working so well, and food is backing up into the esophagus, and it is literally burning the walls of the esophagus because of the high acid that's in the stomach. Um, all right, so I'll go ahead and draw in our, our bolus once again. Let's say the, the bolus has entered the stomach right here. The bolus is greeted by a bath, all of this liquid stuff right here, of hydrochloric acid as well as some enzymes that begin chemical breakdown of the food that we ate. Uh, it, will leave, it will enter the stomach as a thing called a bolus and will leave the stomach as, as this liquidy, gooey stuff that doesn't even resemble food at all. It just looks like liquidy... Uh, mush, and that's called chyme, C-H-Y-M-E. Now you may be thinking, uh, well, you have acid in your stomach. You have hydrochloric acid. That's actually a pretty powerful acid. In fact, um, if you're familiar with pH, um, the lower you are in the pH, the more acidic something is. The lowest pH that's possible is 1. But believe it or not, your stomach has a pH of about 1.5 to 2. Your stomach is really acidic. Now, why doesn't your stomach burn itself? Well, because you are the stomach is lined with a thick layer of mucus that lines all the way around the stomach that prevents the stomach from actually digesting itself. This is a very good thing. You also have uh, several layers of muscles, three layers to be exact. Uh, these layers actually can work. They're, they're very similar to how in math you may have learned about X, Y, and Z. X is our left and right directions, Y is our up and down directions, and Z is our in and out directions. So these muscles contract, they push the food around, they mush that food up into, a, into chyme. They, they basically take the food and put it through a blender. We can have the stomach churning in all different directions. This is a very good thing. Inside the lining of the stomach, all this is lining of the stomach right here, there are these little things called gastric pits. Um, they are they are essentially what you would think of. Uh, the word gastric means stomach. So they are these little stomach pits, and inside each one of these pits are different types of cells. We have mucus cells, and we have parietal cells, and we have chief cells. Our chief cells give off enzymes that begin to break down proteins. So I'll go ahead and write that in here. So these help to give off uh, certain enzymes that will break down protein. Our parietal cells, they're the ones responsible for giving off our hydrochloric acid, as well as a substance called intrinsic factor, which helps to absorb vitamin B. And then our mucus cells, uh, probably not too surprising, uh, they give off mucus. So all those secretions given off by these types of cells will travel up these gastric pits and into our stomach. So let's go ahead and review. We have three types of cells. We have our mucus cells that give off mucus. We have our parietal cells, which give off hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. And then we have our chief cells. These give off a substance called 
pepsinogen. Now, pepsinogen is the inactive form of that protein that I was talking about. That protein I was talking about is called pepsin. Um, that sounds very familiar to, well, the soft drink Pepsi. Um, not surprisingly, that, that uh, Pepsi used to, back in the day, have pepsin in it, which helped your digestion. Uh, so in, in a sense, Pepsi was sort of like a, um, it was sort of like a medicine way back in the day. It contained pepsin, which helped things digest in your stomach. People would drink Pepsi if they had an upset stomach. So pepsinogen is converted into pepsin in the presence of hydrochloric acid. So once the, the substances from the parietal cells and the cheap cells come in contact with each other, um, it, it activates the enzyme pepsin. Now, why doesn't our cells secrete pepsin in its active form? Well, if you think about it, our cells are made of lots and lots of protein. So if we were to secrete pepsin in its active form, uh, there could be a chance that our cells would begin to digest themselves. So that would be a really bad thing. We don't want that. We want the, the pepsin to be activated here in, in the lining of, inside of the stomach. So let's go ahead and review what happens in the stomach. Uh, the bolus, which comes in from the esophagus, enters the stomach and is liquid, uh, liquefied into this thing called chyme. Chyme is what we call liquid food, although you wouldn't actually, it wouldn't actually look like food anymore at this point. Uh, pepsin in the stomach it begins the chemical uh, breakdown of proteins. So proteins begin their breakdown in the stomach. Uh, now notice how I didn't say anything about fat. Fat does not even begin its journey through chemical breakdown in the stomach at all. Uh, the stomach is more of a storage unit than a, uh, than a place where things get broken down. Uh, food enters through the digestive tract uh, through muscle contractions called peristalsis. So peristalsis is those muscle contractions that move food along in our digestive system. Um, the hormone gastrin, which I didn't mention yet, this is the, the hormone that is given off in the presence of food. Uh, it causes your cells um, in the gastric pits to secrete juices. These juices I'm talking about are pepsinogen and hydrochloric acid. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to this, uh, this slide right here. When our bolus comes into our stomach, um, it will begin to raise the pH up to you know two and a half, maybe four. Our stomach doesn't like that. Our stomach wants to have the pH stay in this range right here. So what does our stomach do? Well, it releases gastrin. Gastrin will cause the cells in these gastric pits to begin secreting their, their enzymes and their substances, which will lower that acidity back down to 1.5. Your stomach likes to keep a pH of about 1.5. So that concludes the digestive system in uh, the, the stomach digestion. Our next focus is going to be on digestion in the duodenum. That is the first part of our small intestine. Again, this was Mr. Herps, and I'm signing off, folks. Y'all have a good day. Thanks a lot.